Right now, our friend Rick Hector from Rick's Fire Academy of Detroit joins us on the program. Rick, how you doing, sir? Hey, Cam, man. I'm doing great, you know. Uh, eagerly anticipating spring, whenever it decides to unofficially arrive here in Detroit, man. But, hey, great having a great time. How about yourself? I'm good. Yeah, I, uh, I'm i sorry because we've had some, you know, 70-degree days and it's been sunny and <laughs> flowers are starting to pop out. And then I, I talked to uh, my friends in Detroit and they're like, they're saying things I can't repeat on the radio, uh, but they're very <laughs> unhappy with me posting pictures. It, it's still very much winter for you guys up there. And I apologize for that, Rick, but I am, uh, I'm glad you're with us. And, and hopefully you're going to be heading south for the uh, NRA annual meeting here in a few weeks. Yeah, I'm definitely going to be there. Uh, I can't picture any other place I'd rather be during that time period. You know, one of the great things about uh, going down to the annual meeting, man, is just all the friends that I, I've made literally, you know, all over the country from going down to the convention every year. It's like a family reunion, man, and uh, it, it allows me to recharge my batteries and, and to, you know, get refocused and re-energized. You know, patriots and, and advocates, man, we don't realize how much we get beat up every year, you know throughout the year, but uh, it's a great time, you know, great energy, uh, seeing friends again, you know, it, it's just a great time. If there's anybody out there that's even remotely pondering or considering whether they should go, I'm telling you unequivocally, go. You're going to have a great time. Absolutely. When was your first uh, annual meeting, Rick? Do you remember? Yes, I do. It was in Charlotte. And uh, when was Charlotte? Was that 10, 2010? 2000. And I believe it was 2010. Yeah, I had gone to, you know, other, you know, conventions and meetings. But, you know, when you go to the NRA annual meeting, man, it's it's on a totally different scale. You know, just touring that exhibition hall was just mind-blowing, seeing all the various products, the, the new entries into the, the marketplace. And I got a chance to meet you guys for the very first time, too. It was uh, very fortuitous for me. I was out just sightseeing, looking like a total tourist, man, and uh, ran into John Pop, and we had a great conversation, and, and that took off from there. And I met my fellow bloggers. Uh, it was a Second Amendment blog bash with people like uh, uh, other uh, Sebastian, who runs Thou Should Not Be Questioned, and Jay Grazio, who ran that uh, blog out of uh, Massachusetts, Marooned, and, and just hanging out with everybody, man. It, it, it's just been great. I can't imagine not going to the annual meeting. It's just one of those things that just goes on the calendar every time, you know, a new year rolls around. Oh, yeah, absolutely. And yeah, that was another big one, uh, Charlotte. I think over 70,000 uh, people in attendance for uh, for Charlotte. And I know it's going to be that way for Nashville. But I, I, I know that we'll catch up. I know that we'll see each other. That's a great thing. You'd think, you know, 70,000 people, there's no way I'm going to be able to, to, to find my friends. It happens. I don't know how it happens, yeah. but it happens. Hey, you just out there and you just bump into people, man. It's like just walking the floor, you know, I bumped into bump into folks like my buddy Ken Blanchard and Coleon Noir and I always see you guys and, and a mandatory visit for me anyway personally is to stop by and see see the gunny, you know, and, and talk with him and, and get another picture for the archive. So it it's really cool, man. It, it's one of those times where I can go and just be a total fan myself. Right. You know, and just sit back and just enjoy the atmosphere. All right, well, listen, let's talk about a couple of uh, 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 things. A, I, I doubt highly. I mean, I suppose maybe there'll be some sort of uh, anti-gun uh, a, a protest. I don't know if uh, Mom's Man Action's Kristen Moore will come down from Michigan, but uh, she was on Michigan radio uh, talking, Rick. She said that women need to know that getting a gun makes things more dangerous for them, uh, according to uh, Breitbart's A.W.R. Hawkins, said that women who are considering concealed carry, quote, should know about the potential for self-defense but also about the risks that gun ownership introduces, including homicide, suicide, or an accidental shooting. Uh, and I, as soon as I read that, I wanted to talk with you, Rick, because I think that is so insulting. It's such a uh, it's such an insulting statement, A, for the uh, people who uh, are, are becoming concealed carry holders, and B, for the fire instructors. Uh, I mean, this is an example, I, I think, yet another example of the ignorance of anti-gunners. Uh, when you are talking, when you are teaching your courses, Rick, you do talk about the fact that a, a firearm uh, in accidental discharge could be fatal, that, uh, you know, you talk about the rules of gun safety. You, you do, you know, make people understand that uh, this is an item that fires a, a bullet out of the end of it, right? Absolutely. I mean, that's just fundamental firearm safety, you know, the fundamental, 
you know, three rules as a, as a, as a spouse by the NRA. And of course, you know, the rules for using and storing a gun. But I want to add another class of people that should be offended by the positions this group has made. And that would be just women in general, especially women who identify with being feminists. I mean, what could be more insulting to a feminist or to a woman in general to say that you're a woman and you're totally incapable of operating, you know, a firearm? You know, why mm-hmm. in the world do we even allow them to operate, you know, automobiles or, or, or have access to large knives, when, sharp knives when cooking dinner? You know, it, it, it's just insulting. And, and when you really look at all the stories that have come from across the country and especially here in Michigan, particularly southeastern Michigan, where there are definitely bona fide documented cases in which women, whether they're head of household or or just uh, live alone or whether they're part of an established family, where they have defended themselves, protected their homes, and protected their children. I mean, it flies in the face of facts that we have documented, you know, in the news media. I mean, where do they come up with this? I mean, it's like they just make it up. I mean, if, if... if they just say it, somehow that will make it true, and it just runs contrary to what we've seen in the media. I don't understand where these people come from. Uh, you know, I, I I confess, Rick, I've, I've wondered this myself, and, and you're right. I mean, and we've seen the same sort of argument actually directed at, at college students, too, right? Well, college students, I mean, they're just way too drunk. They're, they're way too irresponsible. There can never be a responsible college student or even a faculty member or staffer who could benefit from a, a campus carry. But, you know, as you say, the, the, this idea, I guess what bothers me is that it's this statement that presumes that women who are becoming concealed carry holders aren't thinking about things like this, right? I mean, they're thinking about their safety. They're thinking about carrying a firearm for personal safety. Well, of course they want to be responsible. Of course they want to be capable and common with their firearm. That's why they're going to you, Rick. I mean, that's why your classes are filling up, because gun owners in general, people who decide, I want to be responsible for my own safety and security, they don't then think, and I want to do a really poor job of it. <laughs> you know, and the thing about gun ownership, particularly people who want to carry for personal protection, it's not a decision that uh, that someone can make for them. It's kind of like being in love, man. You know, once once you know you're in love, no one can tell you you're not. You know, same thing about your perceived need or desire for a firearm for personal protection. You know, here in Metro Detroit, you know, I just got off the phone with a woman, literally within the last 45 minutes, and she said, hey, Rick, I've been following you, and you know what? It's time. And I said, yeah, I know what you mean. No one could tell them that, hey, you don't need a gun. No one can tell them, hey, it's unnecessary. They just decided, hey, things have gotten so bad that uh, I need to have one and I want to protect myself, and I applaud them. No one will actually seek out training, as you said, to conscientiously do a bad job. And I, I'm here to tell you, with, with all the students, particularly ladies that I've trained, there isn't a woman out there that cannot learn how to safely operate and carry a firearm. You know, if anyone tries to convince you otherwise, they're just flat out misleading you intentionally. All right. Now, to that end, there's a story out of uh, West Philadelphia. Uh, police say a man, this is uh, from uh, NBC in Philadelphia, police say a man likely saved the lives of several people when he shot and killed a gunman inside a West Philadelphia barbershop. Apparently this guy was uh, inside the barbershop, started fighting with another person, pulled out a gun, started shooting, and uh, a a man outside heard the gunfire, ran into the shop, took out his own gun, according to investigators. He then uh, struck the 40-year-old man once in the chest. Uh, Police have said this guy's a concealed carry holder. And I believe the uh, the comment by uh, the chief of Philadelphia police captain, excuse me, Captain uh, Frank Llewellyn, quote, the person who responded was a legal gun permit carrier. He responded, and I guess he saved a lot of people in there. I guess, Rick. <laughs> yeah, it's more than guess, man. You know, and, and I definitely applaud people who, you know, are, are so selfless to put themselves in harm's way for other people. I mean, that that's truly a selfless act. But, you know, as we know, that the more guns that you have in the hands of law-abiding citizens, it protects everyone else. It protects the people who are vehemently and ardently against firearms. Just the simple fact that there might be someone lawfully carrying a firearm and is trained to use it could stop, you know, the the, the evil desires and, and, and foolish acts that these criminals want to perpetuate against the rest of us out here. So... 
you know, if you're out there, I strongly applaud people, you know, to take it upon themselves to be more active in their personal protection and get a gun and, most importantly, get the training and be responsible. That's all we ask. Rick, listen, I appreciate you coming on the program, sir. It's always a pleasure, and uh, we will see you in Nashville. I will be in Nashville, my friend. Give my regards to the other Cam and, and to Mr. Pop, of course, and the new guy, Kyle and Eric and, and all the gang. Tell everybody I said, hey, catch you in Nashville. All right. See you soon, Rick. Rick Actor joins from uh, Rick's Fire Academy of Detroit.